Oh, there's Randy Buggers. Ah, gotta love the claps, the 80s synth claps. <laughs> Amazing, thank That's you. Good. Welcome good. everybody to the Hat Chat Podcast, <laughs> episode 90, the big nine Whoa. zero. That's right. This podcast is almost a centennial. <clears throat> We're 10 away, 10 away from that. Oh, I'm sure nice. we've reached that it's before. A... Let's what? find out what 90 year anniversary would be. What, what is a hundred podcast episodes? Hundred podcast episodes of this yeah. run yeah. of our previous run. Right. I don't know if we did. I, I did we not? We did. Have we overtaken? I don't. Well, we didn't do it as frequently, did we? We no. used to do them like uh, monthly, then fortnightly, um, and then there was a big gap. Scattered. Then this is the most consistent we've been. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. That's true. And saying that, who are we even? You're jumping in at episode nineteen. Well, We're just you? rambling on. Oh, who am I? I'm Chris Trot. Oh, hi, Chris Trot. I'm Ross Hornby. Wow. And I'm Alex Smith. And then in response to my own question, a 90-year anniversary is stone. Stone. That's just kind that's of bland, bland that's isn't it? That's like your stone, but it's just harder stone. Apparently, there was a, a couple <laughs> from <laughs> India. One of them lived to be 110. Yeah. Imagine living to 110. Did they look that's... pretty withered at the end, or were they all right? I can't they imagine they looked. I mean, there they were are some okay. That are... In Sexy. The hundreds, we were just, uh, I'll be honest, doable. You know, you'd have to pry. You, have to, you know, I'm glad they're in a, a distance because. Oh right, I thought it was the other Hello. way. Where it's like, you know what? Not they, bad. <laughs> Not I bad at all. Did <clears throat> the banging? No, but like in terms of sprightly, actually, you know, walking around, doing stuff, and you know, mm. being active. That's pretty good in your hundreds. That's amazing. I would imagine I'd be like just kind of. The, you know the guy in um in uh, not in between us uh Indiana Jones uh where he drinks from the <laughs> wrong very cup different. and his face shrivels up and you can basically yeah. obviously go to a skeleton and dust in the end that but, terrified like, me there's a stage in that where he's got like basically yeah completely sunken in eyes and sunk his skin is like you know completely to his uh, bones that's how I imagine I would be at a hundred and withered and sunken in chair and just kind of waiting wrong Jesus cup Christ. wanker. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So, well, I mean, that might not be the case because I've seen a couple of things recently about how Bezos, obviously, oh, to, to complete complete the dystopic hellscape of a future, he's just bought an, a company that's looking into stopping aging. Um, and nice. Okay. Really, and the, one of the billionaires the, is going to do it, won't they? Yeah. Really? Um, and the twenty I want to be immortal. Gonna have to be killing his goddamn Horcruxes by the end of the twenties. Um, the <laughs> other thing is, um, yeah, apparently twenty years or so. Again, this is something has been taken with a pinch of salt. But there's been a couple of things out recently about how twenty years we're probably going to be able to uh, start to reverse the effects of aging quite substantially. And by we, That's you mean we those that can people. afford it? Yeah. No, yes, yeah, we yeah. will. Yeah, we'll Hollywood every. stars we will look eternally now? twenty years old. <laughs> The rest of us will be haggard. It's like, yeah, I love the latest rom com by Jessica Alba, yeah, yeah, still going strong. <laughs> everything goes around in circles, and we are yeah. literally on our way back to the feudal era where you have the rich and landed gentry that have all the stuff and they run all the world, and then we're just happy to have grain and fresh yeah. water to drink. It's you healthy, know, like... it's organic, it's 50% <laughs> off, it's rat meal. Here we go. <laughs> It's good for you nowadays, because mm. that's how it's I marketed. Um, well, we genetically modified rats to eat all the garbage, and <laughs> it, it turns processed. it into healthy, clean meat uh, that we then eat on the rat. Which you can just see a really like eating the yeah. garbage. I mean, well, you've already seen that video of all the the pigs eating plastic. Plastic, yeah. It's happening already, just with different animals. You have, yeah. It's very easy to slip into dystopic futures because that is the reality we're in right now. However, let me pose some hypotheticals for you so that we can... Huh? Okay. Have you been eating rats? He has been uh, eating rats. Let's he, move on he, from that. Uh, like, that I could saw be him a whole discussion. He didn't even cook it. <laughs> Fur Get back here. <laughs> <laughs> it's fresher when they're still moving. Anyway. It's <laughs> our patrons have kindly chosen of three available choices they've chosen their favorite top two so essentially every week 
they're not really picking the one they're picking one not to be included really yeah, so canceling it out, yeah. if anything it's an illusion of choice shit, <laughs> so anyway this is the one that they voted for most so we'll talk about it first what is it alex smith if you could choose a rat to eat which rat would it be now that's absolutely yes. not the one the king the rat king the no king comment of the rats would be my meal the king uh, of if rats. you could pick a if you could pick a topic to have an in-depth documentary made what topic would you pick aliens aliens but there's, there's the thing is like this is uh, you'd have to specify question, obviously, like there's we'll probably trip up in the fact that these probably exist we'll probably anything we come up with might already what these exist. documentaries yeah so sure we need to find something that's like obscure as anything Did you say aliens? Yeah. he's the guy like, that talks like this and talks about the moon and the guess i want i think it's brian Cox. brian, brian Cox Cox did actually says that there's no aliens on aliens he did a, he did an episode on aliens in his like series that he released like 10 years ago or whatever the one that like made him quite famous um where he's talking all about the universe and stuff not the new one where he blows the bbc's travel budget in as few episodes as possible have you I, seen that one yeah, i think i've like, seen the parody of it he's just like walking around on really hot like it's like i watched yeah. a bit of it and i was like jesus christ like every other scene he's like <laughs> in a completely now different continent is it sky. trying to <laughs> compete with cosmos or something yeah i kind of know but and th yeah no it's a good point ross it's something that like you don't normally see a lot of information about i guess like oh man yeah it's a great question but i feel like i need to spend time thinking have you guys got any good ideas i don't know i feel like i'd want it's almost like a just a fly in the wall documentary of what the fuck is going on in in our governments because you don't you, i feel yeah. like they don't really tell you everything not that they would be honest about it and i'm sure it'd be manipulated yeah. but like i don't know if that, that exists if there's you know a camera behind johnson just following his day-to-day -day and actually what kind of fucking shit they do um that'd be too on a day -to -day basis just to, i mean i imagine it would be like uh what's that tv series um uh the, the one with yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, um, fuck, it's gone off my the thick of it. Thick, thick of, it, of it, that's it. it, yeah. Just like that. Uh, yeah. I'd imagine it would be like that. And yeah, that's obviously yeah. how that's staged in its um, style of, you know, kind of documentary-esque, kind of fly on the wall, like yeah. shit's hitting the fan every single day. Um, or like that Black Mirror episode. Yeah, I would episode. find that quite interesting. Um, yeah, like the Black Mirror episode with where <laughs> he gets, uh, has to the fuck pig. a pig um, yeah. to release the princess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i think that would be interesting but also yeah i think that with any documentary there's always a risk of um it being manipulated um like that that's the thing i watched recently the f1 drive to survive whereas that is literally made to be entertainment it's, it's not necessarily all facts and obviously they they manufacture some of the rivalries in a way that like the edit the edit's done and i don't know i mean we had, we studied documentaries didn't we trot and like that's basically what they encourage you to do. They encourage you to create a narrative out of fuck all. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Forge it mm. out of nothing. Create like, oh, we worked crisis. hard trying to get that um, Doug, Doug Cooper documentary, of, uh, The Gnarly Man. Gnarly who, Man. Um, and we did a kayak. He just enjoys kayaking. And we just had to eke every kind of aspect of his personal life and kind of like. We need to find a real sob story in here. And find a sob story, like, essentially, yeah. Yeah, he's, I was, he's growing with a spine problem. Oh, yeah, what was that? Okay, we'll let's that. record more of that. Yeah. Spine problem. Oh, you didn't get as tall as you wanted to be. I nice. Did, Does that yeah. affect your kayaking? Did you almost <laughs> die because of it? Uh, yeah, that's basically were, like, yeah. it, it skews. You, you were just what, like that. As soon as you find that out as a documentary maker, you fucking weasel in on that, and you forget yeah. about the grander picture, and it's like, I can tell a story here with drama in it rather than the facts. Which might be quite mm -hmm. boring in reality. It's like, yeah, I quite like kayaking now and again. Yeah, it's quite fun. A few and... shots of him kayaking. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we recreated so... like a dramatic scene, and uh, he it talks reminds about me how he these, drowned. Like Netflix documentaries, of which there are a million now. After the Tiger King success one, they just yeah. tried to do a bunch of like. I started watching one. It was called like Death Among the Mormons or something like right. that, and okay. it was about in like the nine, early 90s in Utah, um, there was some like Mormon artifacts being shuffled about and then people, there was a car bomb um, and it was pretty oh. dramatic, but like it definitely became just a, a really extended series of, you know, like they, you know how they just add pad and filler constantly yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and it's just like, yeah, yeah. yeah but a uh, really good one, the, 
I've seen recently is about dolphins in oh, nice. filming dolphins on the Disney Channel. Okay. Um, on, on Disney Plus, or whatever they they're like it shows they're pretty how pretty things they film dolphins. It looks so fun. They get to use like jet skis, drones, and diving equipment just to film dolphins all the time, and that looks insane. And then also the um Fantastic Fungi, or Fungi. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, on, that. yeah. yeah. on Netflix, that was a really good documentary as well. Um, really enjoyed that. Uh, yeah. Uh, what would you choose though so so i like the, yeah, the, the, the the political one's hmm. really good i think that's that'd be really helpful because i don't think enough people realize how fucked up our government is yeah. like like right now the uk's government has never been this corrupt hmm. this like blatantly it's just corrupt insane. And polarizing yeah yeah, as well. yeah polarizing exactly <clears throat> Um, I wonder if, like, again, like, like I said, with the drive to survive thing, that it would just be then, like, you then feel sorry for Boris Johnson because that's the story they've lent into, and then you realize the funding's probably, you know, come from them anyway, and it's just mm -hmm. like, I don't know. Oh, I you feel think like it might be used as a propaganda like tool? Yeah, I think so. It'd be hard I feel like, to yeah. give it's credibility. The way you relate to, to prove it. people in that um, F1 documentary is that you're like, well, you know, I actually wouldn't have. It's on series four now. Mm -hmm. First series, I actually really liked. Um, Horner, Christian Horner, for example, I thought, you know, what they were doing was really good. I was kind of like more Red Bull than anything. Mm -hmm. By series four, I fucking hate the guy. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's 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 strange how they manipulate these stories, and obviously, all you see is the bits they want you to see. And so, I feel like, yeah, that that might mm. be um, even more controversial. But I still want to see. I, I just want a camera in the fucking office. Mm. Like how their day to day goes. What the fuck are they doing? Yeah. yeah, but I guess this kind of treads conspiracy waters when you start like. I can't believe anything I see. If yeah. it's a documentary, like how do I know it's all credible and that it's not being manipulated in front of my eyes and that I've been told something else? And I, that yeah, made well, me think about bus simulator. <laughs> bus, bus simulator. Why did they make okay. a bus simulator? So I was thinking of the same thing, but a different context of like, who made bus simulator? Do they really know how a bus driver works? And like, right, okay. the, all the nuance of like, is that keypad there, like the official, is that the way they actually do? routing and right. is that like people that develop games is there any sort of credibility behind like the simulated games flight sim obviously you can watch all the documentaries and stuff and like yeah we've modeled yeah. this on a real blah blah but we could be being deceived of like that's not how a tractor yeah. works in farming sim at all and that's not how farming works in any well, sort I mean, of remote first -hand I mean, experience is obviously very i i mean if you yeah. it's a case of research surely as it well is, like yeah and also do you, do you mean you want to see a documentary Reasonable of like doubt. the developers start starting I guess from scratch so. to, Maybe. to creating uh, the actual end product it was just a similar thought process of like i don't yeah. fully uh know for a fact because i have no first-hand yeah. experience that I'm being told that this is the most accurate like racing right. sim possible and this is the most detailed recreation of a Lamborghini Huracan. I've yeah. never been in one, but they could be deceiving me right, in some yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or like Lamborghini could have paid that developer to be like, can you crank up the uh, horsepower or like the, the tuning or the... Not yeah. that it matters in the grand scheme of things, but if it happens in games like that, documentaries which are more important, you could argue, yeah. about you know blowing open the doors of the government not physically, mm. but like expose style. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I've seen some documentaries on like Call of Duty where they go out and literally like film all the guns in action and stuff, whether that's actually where it, how it performs and how it actually finally sounds in the end thing. I don't know, but um, they do try to do research in that regard, but I think that's mm. more of a design element rather than a, yeah. is it going to sound and feel exactly the same in game? It never does in Call of Duty's really, but yeah. Well, here, yeah, here's a, there's here's so much a... you can do, I guess. Here's a token anecdote in the chat. Uh, okay. I'm a game dev animator. I got to spend a week with ex-special forces to accurately take references of things like cover, take fire, applying first aid, all this sort of stuff. Um, so, That's great. No, yeah, I do. I'm quickly going back to what you're saying, Troy. It's about reasonable doubt, isn't it? It's about, yeah. it's, it, this is the line, reasonable doubt. And I know that's difficult to sum up in a sentence as to what reasonable is, but like, yeah, you're right. You could doubt everything. You could doubt everything you see. You could doubt your way of interpreting the world. You could doubt that you see all of the colors that everybody else sees. You could you could do all of these things, but it's just about like what reasonably would happen and what reasonably allows you to live a, a happy life. I think that's something people have really taken doubting to an extreme, and I understand why. Like especially with technology, it is easy like to deep, doubt deep everything and stuff. Yeah, and making things more difficult to see. I think the most reasonable way to act is 
investigate yeah try and find trusted sources and also don't have such extreme reactions to things so that if you do fall victim to something or fall prey to something your reaction isn't so extreme that it causes harm you know like as in i think that it's okay to be wrong or it's okay to not understand something or be skeptical but don't like build your entire you know like anti-vax movements like anti-lockdown movements like lots and lots of different movements that have happened in the last five five so years just don't be that extreme calm the fuck down you know like be rational be reasonable talk about these things and 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 that's gonna give us a lot better outcomes in general i think than all these people taking all this shit into their own hands and yeah. just becoming but what if that comes down to madmen? Persons, a person's belief system and how willing they are to yeah. believe that, for example, yeah, you know, vaccines are bad for you without mm -hmm. any real knowledge or a couple of articles that may not be fully factually accurate. Um, and if they, yeah, their and belief is strong enough in that, then yeah. they'll go out and take action and start persuading other people i guess um, and that by and large is usually down to stuff like socioeconomic factors affecting how they've learned to learn for example you know like that like, we don't often study how to at like in school and you know things like that how to actually yeah proof things how how to act reasonably how to acquire knowledge you know like there's there's quite a lot in philosophy and stuff like sort of rational versus empirical knowledge um acquisition like the scientific method is another thing you know like these are methods for acquiring and testing ideas but if you have massive swathes of people who are highly influenceable uh, or perhaps don't have those tools available to them to to test knowledge yeah. then that you're going to get massive results like this and then these huge movements are results of socioeconomic inequality ultimately of people not being given access to well being given access to the massive thing that is the internet this overwhelming thing that we've talked yeah. about before just this huge repository of stuff and not really having the tools to to deal with it I mean, we're all we're all part of that, you know. Like, I, I've been into this a million times before, but you know, same with social media and how it affects your mental health. Like, we need yeah. more tools to deal with this stuff, and hopefully, we'll get there. But for the time being, just try and be reasonable. <laughs> just try and not not to act in too much of an extreme way, because yeah, we have no idea half the time, and yeah. I don't know how to drive a bus. Um, I think I could give it a go. But have you ever actually I've really no. been in a bus? No, I haven't know. for ages. <laughs> I actually, haven't been in a bus for about. Last time I was in a bus was when we were at an airport, probably one of those ones that takes oh, you to and from yeah, the. Yeah. I was in a bus very recently. <laughs> Often. Yeah. It's um, terrifying. I mean, especially with scooters around. You're just going to hop on one of those bad boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And you can but, have um, your mate and your other mate on there too. Yeah. All for a pound. Yeah, pack it, just pack it up. Pack it all on. You know what they're doing that, though? You've got to have a bloody driving license to get on one of those scooters. In, you do now, yeah. Yeah, the Voy ones in Bristol, anyway. They're, you have to have a driving license. So that's why people double yeah. up on them. Ridiculous. A driving license. For a I mean, it's, it's, it's more of just case of, I think they want you to know the rules of the road. Oh, right. yeah, but like... they're on the road. You don't need a driving license to operate a bicycle. No, it's don't. just the same. Yeah. Well, it's got an end um, to do with, and it can go from maybe. 0 to 15. Yeah, stupid though, isn't it? I mean, bikes, I mean, they're bikes and, the speed. If not yeah. Bikes. It's absolutely... It, it's, it's, it's dumb. I, but, you know... So, so is private scooter companies being given licenses to use them whilst using your own scooter in a in a town is illegal, and you can be. Yeah, do a documentary on that. I'd love yeah, to do I'd a like documentary, documentary on why on yeah. why Bristol Council is so fucking stupid. Um, <laughs> okay, you know, so we'll another bicycle lane. Oh right, so the road next to me has been closed for six months because they're installing another bicycle lane that nobody's going to use properly, and every mm -hmm. cyclist is just going to have to slow down for all the pedestrians that are walking on it. What a waste of fucking time and money. Now, for context, anyway. Alex Smith has had COVID for the past uh, couple of weeks, so he's been slowly <laughs> yeah. going insane. And Being angrier uh... and angrier inside. <laughs> do you still, are you still do you, are you free of COVID yet? The well, I'm not free of its effects, but I'm not testing positive anymore, which is good oh, okay, news. Good. Um, last yeah. two days, I've returned two negative lateral flow tests. But um, no, I'm uh, very low energy, still trying not to... Uh, sleeping is hard that's what's really annoying like i'll be suddenly really tired and then have a really nice like two hour nap and then when it obviously it comes time to go to bed in the evening it'll just be like i'm exhausted but right. i can't stop staring at the ceiling Ugh. you know um that sucks but yeah no it's it's been shitty it's been really shitty actually surprisingly um wouldn't recommend lasted 
that so i got it i tested positive last wednesday um and yeah i'd say i'm about 85 percent of what i was before in terms of feeling I, I mean i haven't tried exercising yet and i'm slightly worried about that because i've noticed going down to like the bins and stuff to chuck stuff out coming back up i'm out of breath pretty quick and i'm like that's crazy that's not fun um but luckily it hasn't affected my lungs too much um Did but it yeah, make your balls shrivel like oh said. definitely i like mean smaller. i can't believe i could get any more impotent but yeah. it's found a way but no, like get your vaccinations, everybody, because it's not fun. And there's well, you loads. Did. Even with three. It sucks. Even with three. Oh, yeah. yeah, I had that. Um, uh, yeah, so that, that's been a fun week for me. Uh, <laughs> Somehow we all avoided it. I don't know how. I don't know how. Not God knows. Practices we weren't tonguing enough. Not enough top lip frenzy. Yeah. More that. Yeah, and we're all sneezing into each other's mouths next time, I think. Yes. In for a penny, he in for a targeted pound. Targeted sneezing yeah <clears throat> um but yeah it's been <sighs> it's been a, been been fine um my lizard's woken up now that was you know the most eventful thing to happen to me all week was nice, the lizard nice. woke up the day i got covid um Woo! and you got to try out the new steam deck which is which i couldn't really product, get to work which... but trot has got working so i nice. do have it yes um it's a new product new tech it's a great piece stuff. of kit the software is all over the place right now is what i would say but hardware wise very cool here it mm. is there it is if you're watching this podcast on video because you know, i'm showing it look i can clack it, it into the like alternatively just google it's, 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 it's big that's what it's a joystick sound there you go look at that yeah there we go Lovely. beautiful yeah technology that's gadgets. The steam i do dick. love gadgets I love yeah gadgets. um i'm stuff, looking forward but... to trying it out um ultimately uh yeah it's a thing that I'm going to have to play with, and ultimately, it's a PC that's based on Linux. So, and it's made by Valve, who their stuff in the past has been buggy. So, we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. hold the fort for uh, a second, you two, while I fix your faces. Yeah. No Our worries. Faces, um, need to be fixed. Oh, he's. I, I thought it'd never happen. I thought we had to wait twenty years right for the end, age, so. re age reversal thing. Is that what he's working on? I'm guessing. Um, I think. It's something to do with rubbing your own ejaculate into your skin. Oh, uh, right, okay. I mean, I you dub, double check that, obviously. Trust, but verify. Okay. Um, Look, in, I'm already using hemorrhoid cream on the face. So, like, is that... <laughs> <laughs> and is that I is, tried should, that. Should, should I combine eyes, the two? Or? Well, I used the hemorrhoid cream for a while, but then my eyes started to heal over. Oh, they started to seal over. over the yeah, 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 yeah. So that was quite a painful a few weeks of, of yeah. cutting, cutting my eyes back open again. Mm. But... Um, like, no, this, the, the ejaculate on the cheeks skin. definitely will keep the aging at bay. Some people do that. You say that. Yeah. I, I think we've had funny news stories before in the past where they have yeah. literally been about rubbing sperm on on your skin for a better look. Nice glow. Yeah. Um, where I've been that doing that unknowingly for years. Explain. Because there, was, there literally was an article where the a woman was saying how great it was for her skin, but it had to be applied fresh, she said. So... <sighs> There's that reasonable doubt. Reasonable Fuck doubt. Sake. Reasonable doubt. Have reasonable reasonable doubt. doubt. It has to be done. It has to be done. Smith, have reasonable doubt. Just don't yeah, get reasonable emotionally doubt invested in that. Stupid. You're stupid. You're stupid. There's nothing wrong. Just look down. Just stupid. look down when it's happening. It's your own advice. <laughs> stupid. No, I mean I distrust stupid things, Trot. Like <laughs> the Earth is not round. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I prefer a second... all, all of the documentaries for, um, that Greg's in. I want to go inside the factories. Those aren't documentaries. They, can't they, are documentaries. they are documentaries. They actually? are documentaries. Yeah. Look, like, like that's the other thing we learned is I think even something as simple as the one show is a documentary. Anything that kind of like documents real life in any kind of that so isn't way. a news show, yeah. basically. Yeah. Right. So well, Greg is a documentarian oh, of sorts. He's the Louis Theroux of uh, pork pies. <laughs> How do they make them? Oh, I don't know. This machine's crazy. It's blowing air. What? Uh, you telling me? Have you seen, ever seen any um, the Ian Curtis documentaries? Adam um, Curtis, yeah. Adam Curtis. Those sorry, are some it, yeah. really interesting. I love the music he uses. I think this he's got like a really interesting like um, music selection, which kind of really Video creates an well. interesting mood. 
the yeah. clips he uses are just like I don't know it's how he must have a team of researchers just yeah. scouring this stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm. Very interesting yeah. documentary. I think they're on BBC iPlayer. If anyone's interested, yeah, they are. But um, yeah. Yeah. Some, like, some of them are quite trippy and very. Yeah. There's oh, a right. lot of doom, like an impending yeah. feeling of doom. Oh right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's an interesting watch. But, Terrifying. Um, yeah, I like. Yeah. That. Uh, his but first name's well. Kevin, actually, as well. I, I mean, he goes by Adam Curtis, but his first name's Kevin. Kevin. Um, what a, but yeah you're right there is a real like sort of sinister element to a lot of his documentaries yeah. also sometimes they're so dense that i kind of feel like i'm not learning anything because i'm desperately trying to process what he's just said <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but very interesting that for me is like a very sort of extreme example of of a, of a documentary style yeah. i suppose um, he's the voice you'd expect to hear on an old time radio yeah as well. So yeah. it's very kind of like jarring. I was like, yeah. is this made this year? It was. Oh, okay. But like there's this style about them that's um, almost quite trippy. I feel if you've got a vibes. combo of Greg Wallace and Adam Curtis documentaries, yeah. like, if you if you combo them, then you're going to come away feeling nourished, you know, oh, with knowledge. Imagine Greg's voice over the top of that imagery. Yeah. Oh, Ross Kemp. Ross Kemp documentaries as well. I mean, yeah, let's not forget yeah. Ross Kemp on Gangs. Documentarian, on. famous documentarian, EastEnders star. Ross Ross ex EastEnders star Ross Kemp goes into various dangerous environments. Yeah. Um, or Danny does he Dyer, still make stuff? Danny Dyer, yeah. Uh, Ross Kemp was making um, stuff about the coronavirus when that when that happened. He was straight in there. I wonder if he's doing anything on on the war situation. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know if he's doing anything major. I don't know if he's doing gang stuff still. Maybe, but that he stuff was interesting, in interesting as well. Stuff. I think the yeah. latest Louis Theroux stuff has been a bit meh, but then I don't know if that's time pressures because he literally rushed to do it straight after lockdown finished. I don't know. I wasn't a big fan of the latest three-parter. I like the first one, and then the other two. Yeah, the other two are a bit like, like okay. Dave's one. I feel, yeah, I just didn't think he. Uh, I don't know. Got much out out of them. No. Danny Dyer, of course, did some some serious stuff. Danny Dyer's Deadliest Men, 2008 documentary. Danny Dyer sits down with serious hard men, including gangsters, former terrorists, and elite special special forces, to discover how they reconcile their past exploits with their current lives as reformed characters. Danny Dyer, of course, actor, presenter not of... famous for being hard, um, but somehow has formed he's a persona the, he's in the hard around. films. Um, oh, it's just rough. You know, there's 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 hard, and then there's an actor who looks rough. Um, but I mean, you know, Ross Kemp was an actor, and he seemed pretty hard in that incident where he almost got shot. So fair enough. Yeah, where well, they, they. I want to see Danny Dyer prove, him prove himself. Or Ross Kemp prove himself. That's what I'm saying. I reckon Danny Dyer and Ross Kemp should fight. Um, and right, see okay, you want to see them fight? That's we know that's Danny would die immediately. Well, he's got a yeah, he's a dyer. dyer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he's too busy presenting uh, the game show The Wall, right right. Now, uh, where I think balls drop down a uh, wall filled with pins into a slot. I'm so out of touch with nice. an game made into a TV show, TV. another one. Yeah, I, I mean, I, that's I, not, yeah, even I wouldn't go back to TV to watch that. No, actually, no. but I've noticed some so people the wheel. have taken back to TV, like removing that control that they had that the overwhelming like i've got so much in my library i just mm. want a channel which shows me stuff and i don't pick mm. some people have that as like background which i can understand sometimes uh, it's I nice to have something background if you're like i don't know playing a game that's kind of grindy um like call of duty i can't sometimes think of I one. Just have something on or <laughs> i don't play any that. grindy games um <laughs> but yeah i don't know i mean when that comes on i do switch off i change channel quite quickly because you don't like the wall with danny dyer no the wall i wanted to bring back um what's the one with noel edmonds the box the the gunge tank fucking hell deal no no, no what his house party deal or no oh my deal. god deal or no deal yeah that's <laughs> the gunge way tank. too far back <laughs> i was get your own back the gunge tank is get your own back i don't think there was a gun well, had one there was mr blobby in old yeah. house, party house party gun yeah. he had a gun that's tank. old school though yeah, they all had guns, tanks. I preferred the right. money, the money, um, like chamber where they were inside this in case crystal maze. Blew up all the money. I feel like I still really do want to create one of those in our warehouse some at some point. I'm not sure why. We can use we the can jet game show. Um, heater. We can use the blower, yeah, or the jet heater. Well, I don't know about the heater. 
Yeah. Maybe combine the two. Blow it up or get loads of stuff up and then we can start just, just put some ice cubes in Come up in with there. a tactic cool it that we can gather as much stuff as possible. All and right. Bam. Yeah, sounds good. Quids in. But it has That's to be done. sharp objects. Sharp oh implements, okay. like razor blades. blades. How many razor blades up. can you catch in this? <laughs> oh, ah, ah, I got three. Ah, most of them are in my body. <laughs> this is the one in my forehead count. <laughs> it's a work in progress. Kurt Cobain went on Noel's house party. What? <laughs> what, is it like a music guest? Really? Or, as in like just performing? Yeah, like a music guest, I think. Okay. But I, I just really? Googled yeah. grunge and stuff, and I was like, that's Kurt Cobain. Yeah. Touching grunge accidentally. I guess they were around in like the 90s. Um, <laughs> Maybe. Did you just mistype grunge? I could have done. No, no, no. I put down. Um, but that's a good point. No, there's a photo of him next to Mr. Bobby. No. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? You wouldn't expect to see his Nirvana and Mr. Bobby together. Yeah, yeah. Or was it just him on his own? Um, so weird. I mean, you... imagine if Kurt was there, the rest of Nirvana was there. I, I mean, yeah. Dave Grohl, apart from developing a highly successful second band, I don't know whether they're doing anything else at that time. No, probably not. Here you go. I put it in just hats. It's a photo of you can see. bizarrely Dave Grohl with a handgun smoking a cigarette next to Mr. Blobby. <laughs> okay. I feel um, like did he there. not just get a Mr. Blobby outfit or something? Or, I don't know. Do you think so? Do you think that's actually what happens? They staged got, it. Staged. Kirk Vane went, can we get a Mr. Blobby outfit? And they're like, what do you mean to go on Noel's house party? No, no, no. No, I want Just a Mr. Blobby thing. outfit for I'm no other reason. I'm not going to travel. Reasonable yeah, doubt. No, I think that's there. reasonable Trust, doubt. Trust but verify. Trust but verify. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe um, Also, handguns sure. were made illegal in the UK in 1997, so it could be that that was just a real handgun that he took on Noel's Wait, house party. That? Yeah. They weren't that illegal late. before then. Yep. I thought it was... Yeah, okay. There he yeah. is. People just had handguns. What, what, you could just buy them... Not willy-nilly. You still willy needed a firearm. You couldn't buy license. them willy-nilly. I knew that was the word you were going for. No, yeah. not willy-nilly. Um, but you still need a firearms license. But yeah, sure. essentially, okay. they were banned in 997 because you know they're pretty dangerous and pretty easy to hide. Um, yeah. There are a couple yeah. of states in the US now that have legalized... I think, uh, I want to say Ohio... Um, it might have been Idaho. I don't know. Some arrangement of four letters that sounds similar. Um, <laughs> they've they've legalized the concealed carry of mm -hmm. handguns without a permit. So huh? you can go into huh? a gun shop. I mean, there might still be like the three day limit, but if you go to a gun fair, then you can buy them there. Um, so you could buy a gun and just hide it on you. I mean, legit. I don't want to go to states like that. Um, like I don't want to go to places where people can just buy and own and conceal handguns. It just feels so fucking dangerous. There are too Again, many idiots in the world. We need a fly on the wall documentary of the states. Yeah, just figuring out why that came to it. Why that law is being pushed. Because the Republican the... politician from that area was coming up for re-election in the midterms, and so they decided to push through something like this in order right. to get all the gun nuts on board. It's, it's as simple as that, I think. Mm. Anyway, sorry, what were you going to say, Ross? Uh, no, I think there's quite a few documentaries about um, gun laws in the States, and obviously stuff like Bowling for Columbine. Mm. It's quite an interesting um, take on, on how gun laws didn't really change too much after that i mean i think there were some changes um but it's more just well i don't think it, i don't know if it did much after that because i know he did another second documentary didn't he, after about the same thing yeah there were more and more mass shootings bowling for then, soup right it was bowling for soup the pop punk band um <laughs> famous for like one song was it bowling yeah for the soup? message didn't work in band Ooh. format did it well <laughs> <laughs> you get the point soup. across bowling the gun documentary yeah, mm. another one. I saw them live, um, and I've forgotten all their songs. <laughs> did you really? Yeah. You saw Bowling for Soup live? Where was yeah. that? It was a, it like... a really old download. Uh, oh, two. Donnington. It was Shit. a Donnington. There is a second hypothetical yeah. here. There is. <clears throat> right out there. What's, what's... It says, if you could see an invisible measuring scale above everybody's heads, what would you want that scale to show? And before we started talking about this, when I glanced over it earlier, I literally thought likelihood for immediate violence would be quite a useful one you know like as in like, you know, like, dangerous like, are they a yeah, danger meter danger level yeah like a uh, threat level yeah yeah threat so level, like okay. you know like because ultimately i don't really give a shit what other people do around me and i don't need any more information on them so the only thing that would really affect me is how likely i am to get into an altercation or for my life to be threatened 
So I guess that would be quite a Just, useful scale. Would um would a trust meter cover that ground as well? Do you yeah. Think? If, it's, if it was literally how trustworthy someone was, I don't know if that really. Well, you could trust them to do violence. How violent they are. Like, yeah, it's <laughs> like you're trustworthy, but this guy's definitely gonna fuck shit in up. In what degree? But like, I don't know. I think I think trust is quite an important thing. Like, if you're you know, in a public place, you know, oh, this person is mm. really trustworthy. Uh, can you just hold my dog a second while I grab a you know carton of milk mm. or whatever? Like, that's a nice. That would be nice to know on the fly that you can trust someone. Um, but I don't know if that covers violence. I'd have above all that. Danger, okay. trustworthiness, cock, clock, counter. How many times yeah. someone's clocked my cock as a counter <laughs> above their head? <laughs> nice. So they've ha well, they've they looked at your, your they've looked any at your glances, any glances in my direction. Oh, three, and I, they've just walked past. Oh, okay. Mm. Does it just? Are you limiting it to the cock, or just in general, or you've got like a? And why would you want to know that information? <laughs> What information? I don't is need that to disclose you? why. Have you got a measuring scale that shows my inner thoughts? You can't well, see your cock through your trousers, though. Like it's crotch, certainly not big clock enough. Clock count then. Okay. How many times they look down at your crotch? I mean, it's quite a neutral place to look if if yeah. if you're and also sure. Like, He's suggesting I'm I mean, sure. Mine, Although mine, there's not much low. distance from my dick. Does it have a duration <laughs> on there as well? Or is it just case if they glanced it briefly because they were looking to go looking elsewhere past mm -hmm. you? But they happen. You happen to walk past their their, their gaze, or were they staring at it for an extended period of time, and you need to either pull your fly back up, hmm. or um, pull it's it back a, down. I don't know. Maybe you want to watch. Multifaceted, useful, versatile stat. I think to have cock, clock, counter, counter, or cock nice. clocker, cock clocker. <laughs> yeah. Are you walking or, around with your penis out? That's the real question because I think you're going to get a lot. I uh, know because that, the cows gonna go will up. be going crazy. Maybe that's it. You're just worried your cock's out and you're worried that the moment you start seeing numbers appearing above people's heads, you're like, oh shit. Oh, fuck, not again. Thank God for this scale above everyone's heads because yeah. I wouldn't know otherwise. Yeah. Whereas Smith's there, no threat. No threats detected around. No one. <laughs> no None of them are telling <laughs> you <laughs> that your we're flies are around. They're, they're trustworthy. You wouldn't trust that one. Oh, they're very violent anyway. Oh, don't worry then. Um, Why is everyone's yeah. threat levels going cock, up? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Um, I think that's all I need to worry about, really, because that's the only thing I really worry about in public. It's like my one, right? Yeah. How many times a person's looked at my crotch, and I don't want any detail as to why they have. Simply the number of times they've done it. That to me is the data. It's an icebreaker, isn't it? Really? <laughs> oh, hello, sir. I noticed you've looked at my crotch eighteen times in the last thirty seconds. What's uh, what's occurring? Don't ask how I know. Um, but I know I've got a I've got an incredible power. I, I was given the ability to see one piece of information above a person's head. That piece of information happens to be the number of times they looked at my penis. Can I help you? <laughs> um, the danger thing is important there. You're right. Depends, what about? I mean, like I don't know, relative likelihood that they will be your friend. Um, or is compatibility. that compatibility? I don't know compatibility. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's quite a good empathy reason. scale. How 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 nice they are, nice nice scale. But it's all it's all subjective. Apart from you know, I feel like mine's pretty. Yeah. Are they going to do violence? Yes or no? So I'm sat a, in a cinema. A, do you steer clear? Yeah. I'm sat in a cinema every so often, my mind wanders, and I'm like, fucking hell, if it kicks off in here, how am I going to get out of this cinema? You know, that's what the mm. kind of things that go through my head because ultimately, I see. Are going to make you more paranoid? Like, no, less paranoid. He would be. Well, you'd you'd have to check. So Why does it make it better, the fact you've walked past a couple of violent psychopaths and haven't noticed? <laughs> I'd rather be like, blissful ignorance. Away from them. Well, it's not really blissful, it's dangerous. Well, you, I guess you'd, it'd be good if you were in the police force. Because then you. I mean, Holy then, shit. OP. Yeah. You, it you, would be a super. You need to get nerfed. Of sorts. Yeah. Criminal? Um, yeah. Yeah, it'd be very there, useful. Right there. Yeah, very useful. How evil they are. When, How many I kills mean, they've had? How many kills? Above their heads. Like yeah. a, their a kill star counter. system in GTA. Five yeah. star. Oh shit! Kill counter above their head. Oh, they've killed three people. Three. three. That one. They've but what if there's people. one above your own head and you don't even realize yeah. you've killed somebody? Like, say for example, uh, you got COVID and don't realize, and then yeah. accidentally oh, gave shit. it to somebody, and then they die. Have you killed them? How's this I mean, metric measured? Then, again, you could say case. the same metric for maybe, I guess, um, the emissions from your car. What if they've yep. inadvertently yep. caused? cancer or something yeah 
or yeah. inappropriately uh, disposing of a battery. Yeah, or you know, dropping. You, yeah, maybe you dropped a banana skin and someone slipped and cracked their head like uh, ten hours later. Imagine that. That was your Imagine skin. Imagine finding out that was your you've skin, killed buddy. someone inadvertently like that. Yeah. That would you've be almost crazy. certainly had an effect on it, I imagine. It's Especially being effect. Western. We use like something like four times more resources than our sort of uh, less developed uh, counterparts. Americans use eight times as many resources. Wowzers. Americans are the highest consumption per capita in the world. Slow America down. America number one Fox. again. <laughs> How about getting one. an efficient car? How about getting a car with a smaller engine? Um, Sorry to our American listeners. We know that you're probably more conscientious than the average, but we like taking those big stats and dumping hard on your country. Sorry. So you don't have to listen to us or take what we take as fact or indeed any representation of how you live your life. You know, it's a freedom of speech, Mm. um, I suppose. And you don't have to be. I mean, fuck, who the hell am I? Who am I? Goodbye, gun. Um, Our fuel is always going to cost more than your fuel. That's what we know. Yeah. Regardless, mm-hmm. it's always going to be more expensive for fuel here. I think you can learn a lot about someone and extrapolate so much data from the cock clocker. Oh, the cock clocking. Okay. Because... There's, there, there's data to extrapolate. Yeah, but I wouldn't say like the rich. I could get form. threat level from that, I reckon. Oh. And uh, compatibility. Okay. Chris Trot, the sperminator. <laughs> what if they, what if you have one where they're just a, it just says whether they're attracted to you or not? Just read the room. Just read the room. Yeah. I think just cut the corners and go straight for the cock clocker. There's a sweet little old lady just looking your way. She's trying to do the clock clocker, but you've changed it. It says there's attraction on there. Bam, it's on like a hundred percent. Yeah. It's off the scale. Yeah. I don't need a where gauge to know it? that that's always a hundred percent, Russ. Oh, okay. Does attractiveness remove threat? Any old ladies, though, because you could grandma, you could mitigate having a danger level by yeah. having an attractive level instead, because if they're attracted to, you, they're less likely to hurt you. Well, there's quite a few serial killers that would probably buck that trend. Um, Let's get them on. Who's the guy who killed John Lennon? Was he a fan of him? He was yeah. a fan. Not necessarily attracted, but All right, maybe it's not one. Form of attraction. <laughs> maybe it's not one. Killed him. It might not be one to one. I mean, that's why I'll I, get a team of scientists to really extrapolate my cock. Well, it just and... comes down to how well you can argue your 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 point, I suppose. But yours is funnier than mine, so there's the value in it for our listeners. Um, okay. Speaking of value, you too can contribute to this podcast at patreoncom slash hat chat. Hat, hat films, films. Fuck. yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, well, thanks to those people because they chose those two hilarious hypotheticals. Um, well, they weren't hilarious until I brought in the cock clocker, which I thought was a real hoot. Yeah, Before exactly. then, we had quite meaningful, deep discussion. It wasn't yeah. deep. I think just trusting someone is, is kind of a No, the other question as well. To, yeah, I'd argue we've changed the world today, Ross. I think we have. I think we've set we've the world it. to right. We did um, it. A bit of trust. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, is there anything else we need to talk about today? Um, man jailed for attacking a stranger with a seagull i see here oh did you see that one um yeah that was one <laughs> of the first ones. Weapon? again i didn't i was struggling to find funny news it's hard to find funny funny news but there's weird news <laughs> strange news um such as this one yeah man jailed for attacking a stranger with a seagull actually fun yeah. story i guess i had to i, I didn't know how to, how do you pick up a seagull you could because... like your hands around its wings from behind yeah like yeah i tried chicken. to do that there was a seagull on my balcony Right. right. It was just face slamming the glass. Like there's a glass panel where um it would just face slamming to get through it. It was like kind of just pecking it and then oh, it just kept pecking. like just ramming its head to the side, trying to get through yeah. the glass because it thought that it was obviously it was I mean, clearly clean, very clean glass. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't backing off. And so I was like, Well, do I grab it? And every time I went to grab it, its wings expanded and like they're quite threatening. Like, well, it's just yeah, it's a very very a very flappy creature. Yeah, and I was like, "Well, I don't want to hurt its wings by like grabbing it too hard or pinching it, or like then getting pecked to shit." So, yeah. like, I mean, after yeah, you know, a little bit of time, I managed to shoo it around and give it a bit of a runway. Yeah, because it was literally just backed itself into a corner, just desperately pecking and trying to push through a glass. Pane. Sounds pretty funny. You should have filmed um, it on your phone. I did film it. Oh, <laughs> so now I do have footage of it. Of, Will that well, be in not, a schlock? The, um, maybe. Um, this may. Do you would dox you? It doxes also, me a little a bit. Towel. A towel would work as well. Chuck a towel a over towel? it. I was thinking okay, I oven mitts. A towel. Um, yeah. 
I can yeah, work I'll show it. you this footage again. I don't know if it's doxy. I mean, no, this one isn't, but it's literally just a, a bird on my on my uh, balcony. I'm going to triangulate Sorry. exactly where your balcony is. Oh, in, no, that is in pretty, focus. pretty low, not in focus. Oh, yeah, I see him. I see I him. Know, but there he is. He's, oh, he's there. Bird. That's when he just, when he had a bit of run up, you can't really see yeah. him very They're big on boys, aren't they? Um, but they're big, they and it's just like, yeah, before it got to that point in the uh, balcony, it was just baseline for ages. It really was persistent. And Murphy was going nuts. Yeah, so I he because I think he would have gone out there and he would have either rushed to it like attack. I don't know if he would have attacked it. I think he would have been more curious and backed off. Yeah, off here. yeah. When, when he sees bugs, he kind of just sniffs them and then it kind of sits down and watches them. Well, it must be sniffing but, you all um, the time. Yeah, you know, this guy. This back to the actual the seagull story. Yeah. Um, uh, what? The, where, where the fuck started? Here he is. It hasn't been a good week for seagulls. First one was killed by a monkey that plucked it from the air at Chester Zoo, and now one has been caused to used to cause GBH. Um, so grievous bodily harm. Paul grievous. picked up a seagull and threw it at a stranger before he launched a vicious attack, kicking and punching him. The assault was so violent he left his victim with a broken jaw. He threw wow. a, a seagull at someone <laughs> and then attacked them. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> How did he pick him up? That's a great first salvo, though, isn't it? It's like uh, the first like, one is follow it up. The monkey one. There's the, oh god, there's video footage. Oh god, there's a video of the monkey <laughs> has to do, grabbing a seagull and smashing it against a tree. <laughs> oh my god, god. monkeys are brutal. Like I get, I know, like I have yeah. a hilarious problem with monkeys, but like man, they are violent. Oh, god, they, they'll tear things apart. Was eating her face. There's a scene in the lighthouse. I've mentioned the lighthouse a few times. It's got oh, William is that Defoe. The black and white thing with William Defoe. Yeah, and... William Defoe and Good. Patterson, Robert Patterson. It's really, it's it's weird and it's Atmospheric, funny. I think it's worth though. watching. Right. Okay. Some really creepy moments, some really funny moments. Uh, William Defoe does a really good performance. But there's a point, um, which isn't much of a spoiler. He grabs a seagull and he smashes it against a rock, and it's just so ridiculous. That it's just like <laughs> it really take, takes you takes you back a bit. Mm. But um. Yeah, this monkey's doing the exact same thing, and that guy uh, literally just threw a, a seagull at someone, and that's that was the news really. And that he's just a violent person, so I thought that's one like... to avoid, Smith. Speaking of Danger. William Defoe, go on. Yeah. I watched the new Spider-Man film last night. It's finally oh, available it to buy on yeah. digital oh, okay. platforms. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. I have to watch I it. Enjoyed it. I didn't watch it um, at the time. It came out. Yeah, it's decent. The, the, it gets better as the film goes on as well. It was a bit like, in the beginning, I was a bit like, mm, this is just another standard throwaway How Avengers How far film, is he going like, to get from home, really? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But uh, no, I won't spoil it. But no, it got really good towards the end. Um, there's some surprises and some fun fun stuff. It was a fun cool. film. Uh, so, yeah, that was good. Watch it later. Yeah, yeah. Good shit. Watch The Lighthouse first, though. I watched The Lighthouse to warm watch me the up for it. They, yeah. they create a mix of, was it kerosene and honey and call it monkey pump. <laughs> and then William Dafoe was like, monkey pump! And then he just, it's just really fucking very surreal. Very weird one. I remember I watched it on Halloween. It was just so strange. But Good. worth a watch. I've got okay. a cool fact yeah. about Willem Dafoe from the oh, Spider Man yeah. movies. Yeah, that's right. When he yeah. was uh, Green Goblin in the Sam Raimi ones, when mm -hmm. he was Norman Osborne, the regular businessman, he had uh, teeth implants, like fake oh, really? teeth. That look really straight, and then when he was the Green Goblin, they told him to remove it and just use his old, his regular teeth no, because oh, he's normal right. teeth and more demonic looking and more so demonic looking. So imagine that. It's like okay, we're gonna put you in like nice teeth for like he's being normal regular. Now. But can you be you for like the bad yeah. guy? <laughs> I'm a fang boy. That's the reason we got you. You look fucking freaky. I'm <laughs> yeah. yeah, he does. He's got a pointy nose and he looks like a demon. Uh, so yeah, fun fact. To lead Don't you all it. off onto your week of exploration, journey, finding mm. yourself. Mm. You know, what metric would you have above someone's head if you had yeah. to choose? Have a think about it, you know? That's that's the kind of thought experiments we provide you on a weekly oh, basis here. You're and it's homework. We need clearly our patrons love what we do because they continue to support us. Patreon.com slash have films. That's right. Thank you. And if you would like to maybe get something back, if Patreon doesn't feel like enough for you, um, there's a Fresh Merch store, freshmerch.fm, where we have some Hat Films aprons. If you'd like to get some Hat Films aprons, great for cooking, maybe great for covering a seagull if it's on your balcony and you want to 
Get rid of it. <laughs> also, a hat film. Or maybe a mug. Available. It's massive. It's big, isn't it? Fresh big mug. Dot F M. Big a monkey pump, Ross. Monkey pump. Yeah, a bit of kerosene. Um, <laughs> three parts kerosene, one part honey. You really shouldn't drink kerosene. It's no. it's, um, it's methylated. Yeah, but they were very uh, desperate at the time. You'll see. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you for listening and watching, and we'll see you next week for episode 91 as we get Centennial in the last nine episodes last or so. The run-up to the, run up. the big it's, one. It's, it's going to be a big one. It's going to be insane. So, yeah, enjoy that. And we'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks Ta-da. for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 I think we're sharing this property with several other people who are enjoying a holiday here. Um, we'll be having dinner with them. Um, and make sweet love to their wives. <laughs>